your weekly view of young leaders taking big steps. This is NextGen. Presented by PFI, home of Boo Daddy. We've been in and out of numerous agricultural education classrooms where we've been able to see students learn about agriculture firsthand. Now these same students are taking that learning outside of the classroom to a floriculture workshop. So Mr. Whitaker, you are no stranger to agriculture education. I understand 29 years in the classroom? That's correct. Take me through what's kind of got you through those 29 years and motivated you to um, kind of teach this hands-on agricultural learning year after year. Well, that's, that's the great thing about what we're doing today, uh, teaching kids uh, hands-on learning. They're going to remember it better, not to mention it's just simply more practical when they get out of school. Uh, they can use those things and ultimately that's what we're about. We're trying to prepare these kids for at least an entry level position in, a, in an ag industry somewhere. Well we're here today at a workshop, um, floor culture workshop, leading these kids into a career development event that's going to be taking place uh, throughout the spring. Take me through what is a career development event. Well, they hold several different career development events. As you mentioned, this one is uh, floriculture, but uh, obviously kids uh, learn different aspects of the contest. In today's contest, uh, they have an identification portion, uh, and that's what we have here today. Mm -hmm. There's other parts to the contest, but the idea behind the career development events is that uh, they learn some practical knowledge that they could use in a career when they're no longer in high school. And of course, the high school students, a lot of them like the competition aspect of it as well. So today, students are learning um, the ID aspect of the contest. There's 131 flowers correct. on that ID, but that's just a portion of it. I understand there's disorders, that's correct. tool ID, and then a written test. So let's jump back to disorders. What is that and, and how does that apply to the contest and to real life? Well, the disorders portion, the, the the thing the student has to do is they have to identify which classification the disorder is. Is it an insect, pest, or mite problem? Mm -hmm. Is it a disease or is it a nutritional uh, problem? And so they would identify that. Then they would identify uh, what the disorder is. Then they have to identify what a cultural control method for that disorder would be and what a chemical control method for that disorder would be. So if a student that learns that, uh, mm -hmm. if they get an entry level position in a greenhouse, maybe as a grower or assistant grower, then they'll be able to walk through and, and recognize that, hey, this particular crop in the greenhouse has one of these issues and what do we, what do we need to do about it? Mm -hmm. so. So Tools are another aspect of the contest. You know, they're identifying the things that they use um, each day in a greenhouse, in a nursery type. Take me through what some of those might look like. Well, there's both tools that would be used in the greenhouse industry and then tools that would be used in, if they worked in a retail flower shop. Okay. Uh, you know, for the greenhouse part, there's different soil amendments that we might add to the soil to, to get it to drain better or hold more water, whatever we're looking for, different types of containers that greenhouse businesses use. Mm -hmm. And then on the floriculture side, there's some uh, tools that they might use in a flower shop as far as the different types of holding devices, different tools that they would use. And the idea behind that is, is again, so they when they get out of school, they know how, how to use these things in the real world uh, in a real job. Well, let's take, uh, pretend that I'm one of your students. Take okay. me around and let's look at some of these uh, uh, plants that are on the ID and what characteristics are you wanting your kids to remember so that on contest day they can know and ID them? Okay. We'll just start right here. Okay. Uh, this is a pansy and it is an annual bedding plant, so I would want my students to know that this is likely going to be planted in a flower bed and mm -hmm. has a life cycle of one year. Uh, the bloom obviously can be all kinds of different colors, but they should be able to look at this after they've been in horticulture and determine that this is a dicot plant. And so that's one way they can sort off plants. Well, this is a possibility because these are all the plants that are dicots and mm -hmm. these are all the plants that are monocots. Uh, so they, they need to learn the leaf shape and mm -hmm. the veneation type. And uh, so I would tell them that that's the things they need to look for on the pansy. And so when they're done, they should know that this is an annual bedding plant, that it's a diacod. And then oftentimes I'll pull leaves off mm -hmm. and just give them a leaf test because if they can get the leaf, they can get the whole plant. And, the foundation you know, of the plant. Yeah. And, you know, I tell kids all kinds of little things to help them remember them. They come up with things too. Mm -hmm. but, 
I tell them this kind of looks like an old antique soap dish that you're like your great grandmother might put on her bathroom sink, and <laughs> that that tends to Usually they tend to remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What we got next? Uh, this is a wandering Jew, and it would be one that would be used in a hanging basket. Mm -hmm. Where this is an annual bedding plant, this one would be considered a foliage plant. And uh, I mean, students ought to see that it kind of vines out, and most of the time they would market this particular thing in a hanging basket. Uh, so they'll recognize or should start recognizing the difference as far as what is a bedding plant, what's a cut flower, what's mm -hmm. a, a foliage plant, what's a flowering plant, etc. And you know, this is a small cutting of the one or yes. two. They have to know, be able to idea all stages of that plant's life, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes when students do that, uh, that you know, if you, for example, if I have a plant at home that's a lot larger or a lot smaller, yeah. that's something they have to get past. But if they'll learn those identifying keys, you know, most of the time they'll they'll get them right. This one is a primrose, and it is obviously a flowering plant. Mm -hmm. And the, obviously the blooms can be a different color, and they can also be, you know, different. Uh, inflorescent type than what this one has but you know this one I tell mine it looks like rutabaga lettuce and most of the time you it know does. they uh, they'll they'll get that and again this would be one that they would need to know that I'm going to see this in a potting media it's not going to be in a vase because it's not something that should be used as a as a cut flower mm -hmm. in an arrangement what are some of the most uh, unique or unusual plants that students will see on this ID well they're almost all totally different. The, the challenge for a student is, is just to remember the identifying characteristics and then in their brain, match that up with the right name. Uh, you know, there's some of them that, you know, they have everything from a succulent to, to cut flowers, to bedding plants, to perennials. Mm -hmm. So th there's a wide, uh, a large diversity of different types of plants, so. Now, are these all plants that they would find um, throughout the state of Missouri? Yeah, I mean, some of them are obviously house plants, some mm -hmm. of them are bedding plants, but a lot of them you probably see right here today at the Lawn Garden Show, but, you know, there's an African violet in one of these tables, which is the most popular house plant in America. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of people know what they are because, you know, they set them in their window seal, they're low light intensity, and they bloom year round. Uh, so, yeah, these are, these are common, and that's why they're on our our floor culture list for students to learn.